Okay. So I'm unretiring from producing. Just came back from two weeks of vacation. I don't know if you'd call it well-deserved, but it was definitely well-needed. My family and I went to Sweden. We went to Switzerland. I did a show in Sweden. I got to meet and interview Bjorn from ABBA, and I also got a chance to hang out with the great songwriter-producer Max Martin. One of the things that happened while I was gone is that some studio reconstruction in the control room was happening. Mike, who does all the work around the studio here, redid the floor. And one of the reasons why I haven't done any recordings in the control room over the last couple of years is because the floor squeaked. And anytime I'd go in there and do guitar videos, people were like, what's that sound? And be like, <laughs> the control room basically became unusable. Now, I've done many, I don't know if you say interviews, I've done a few interviews in the past and people always ask me, why don't you produce anymore? Well, YouTube is pretty much a full-time thing and I got to the point where I really didn't want to produce other people's music. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to make videos on recording, and that doesn't mean that I don't want to make my own music. Let me tell you a little story about my dad. Here's my dad in around 1950s, in his 30s or so, and he was a huge music lover. Now, he worked for the railroad for 42 years, but one of his jobs on the weekends was to work in a place called Joe Squeezers, a jazz club in Rochester, New York, where he bartended. And all the greatest jazz musicians came through town. they do this circuit. They'd play New York City, then they'd go up north through Albany, then to Syracuse, then Rochester, where my dad was, and then Buffalo. Another thing my dad did was he got his hair cutting license. So he would cut hair on the weekends, including our hair. Here's a picture of my dad cutting my hair, and you can tell that I'm not having a great time with it. And he would give us buzz cuts or whatever cuts he was <laughs> working on at the time until this haircut here. This was in sixth grade. I don't know if it's the Prince Valiant cut, but it's the most horrendous haircut of all time. And after that, my dad never cut my hair. You can see in this picture here of me and my brother John, my hair is growing out. I'm 14. My hair looks pretty much like what 14-year-olds would look like in the mid-70s. Okay, so my parents were really supportive of my music career, all the way through getting my undergrad and master's, and even through when I quit my college teaching gig and started playing in bands in my 30s. They probably thought it was crazy, but they were incredibly supportive. One of the things about producing when I was doing that, my dad's like, why are you working on these other people's music? And there was really, you know, that's how I made a living. But my dad in... 2004, he had not been feeling well for the past year, and he got diagnosed with lung cancer in March of 2004. And he passed away three weeks later. It was awful. It was, it was just awful. Those of you that have lost parents, you know what, what I'm talking about. One of the things I promised him was that I would actually make recordings myself. I'd make my own guitar recordings, which is one of the reasons why I'm redoing things here in the control room. So let's go in there. GL's working in there right now. Let's go see how much progress is happening. Let me show you a little bit about what we have going on. So we took everything out of the control room here. GL is over here. He's wiring everything up. Yep. You want to tell him a little bit about what you're doing? So we put in, we took out all of the gear from the racks. And at this point, we needed to, uh, you know, once the floor was made, that's why we took everything out of the racks. We moved the racks out. And Rick told you that we had taken these original uh, cabinets or the, the credenzas that we had made um, and stained them. So Mike stained them. He made them look great. Uh, just really gave them an, a facelift and an upgrade. And so now we've put those back in. We've put all the gear back in. And we're just wiring everything up at this point. So Tell them about the, about the trough that we had Mike make over here, which I think is really cool. So the trough is really just a way of us passing our wires from our patch bays underneath the, the flooring so that we can get everything, like just not have wires hanging out. Because we had terrible uh, messy wiring. Yeah. yeah, cable management, yeah. which is which is a no-no in studio yeah. land. So it's just one of those things where we've tried to cover everything up. And, and these boards, where's the middle one here? I'll show you how this goes. There's three of these and they will just go down very easily. 
Which is so they amazing. just lay right in the trough and we pull them up and there it is. That's Done. so cool. We had the entire control room rewired because the old patch bays that we had when we built the studio in 2005 were all scratchy. And they got to the point where, oh, this thing doesn't work, that thing doesn't work. This happens in studios and you have to fix the things over time. But when you're making YouTube videos, you don't really have time to fix things, especially when you're not using it. But I used to make these things on guitar strings or recording guitar amps or recording drums, you know, top 20 drum intros. But I stopped doing those videos because the patch bag was wasn't working well. We got all new patch base. We took our racks that we had built back at the beginning, Mike resanded them, restained them, and are redoing the control room and are gonna start to make recording videos again. Not that you guys are, you know, are asking me when are you gonna do this, but this is something I want to do for myself and I think was an important part of the channel. Even if it's the top 20 drum intros or drum fills of all time, we were using the control room for these things or my Stairway to Heaven recreation video. Ken was in recording the drums and we had not been able to do that, but we're going to be able to do that. Here's a little time-lapse video that we've recorded over tearing the stuff out, putting the stuff back. I think it's really fascinating. I love the construction process of this. Once the rewiring is done, we're gonna get back to work on stuff and actually turn some of these things on and run sound through them. So I'm really looking forward to this. One more update. I think everything is patched in. You can see all the mic pre's, EQ's, everything. Patch bay looks good. Really love to know your thoughts on this. Please leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, and uh, thanks so much for watching.